tell our folks that this is Amos. We is now in the Grand Central Station. And the reason we are down here is to see Sapphire's mama off to Chicago to visit her other daughter, Fluorescent. All right, Samson, put it down. George, have you figured out when mama gets to Chicago? Well, with the Eastern Standard Time and the eastbound reading up, and uh, westbound reading down in uh, light and dark type. The only way I figure that if your train is on schedule, you are due in Chicago 10 minutes ago. <laughs> no wonder. You was looking at the wrong train. It says here, plain as day, New York to Chicago. <laughs> well, what do you know about this, Sapphire? What, Mama? It says here, yeah, I got a half hour stop over in Los Angeles. Oh, Mom. The 20th Century Limited to Chicago, now boarding on track six. Uh-oh, that's my train. I better check my bags to see if they're all right. Tell her you're gonna miss her. Uh, gonna miss you, Mama. Can't you be more sincere? I don't want to overdo the thing. She might not leave. <laughs> Everything's all right. I guess I better get on my train. George, you're not going to stand there and let Mama lug those heavy suitcases to the train. Why, certainly not. Put them down, Mama. And I'll scout around, see can I find you a hand truck. <laughs> Sapphire, strange as it seems, I'm going to miss your Mama around here. Well, George, I never expected to hear you say anything like that. Well, I can't explain it. It's like a prize fighter without a spawn partner. I'm afraid I might go stale. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something, George. You're going to miss Mama for more than one reason. I don't know if you have forgotten it or not, but Mama was paying us $15 a week while she was here. Holy mackerel, that is right. I forgot all about that. And frankly, George, we needed that money for the rent. I guess the only solution is for us to think about taking a border in Mama's room. Now, wait a minute here. That's out. There ain't no stranger going to invade the sanctity of my home. Well, that's all very well, George. But if we don't take in a border, the only other alternative is for you to go to work. All right, then. I'll go to work. You will? I'll go to work and find a border so fast it'll make your head swim. <laughs> And I tell you, you wouldn't only just be a boy in our house, you'd be more like a son. Well, uh, what about Sapphire? The same way, Andy. Ever since we was married, Sapphire always said she liked to hear the pitter-patter of feet around the house. And with them feet of yours, Andy, she was really him. Well, this thing is beginning to sound all right to me, Kingfish. Yeah, Andy. And I'm only going to charge you $15 a week. $15 a week, huh? Yeah, and uh, that includes uh, three meals of Sapphire's cooking. Uh, does I get any reduction for that? Oh, no, Andy. <laughs> she a great cook. And on top of everything else, don't overlook the big revenge you're going to have of staying in our place. Well, what you mean? Well, Andy, you've been living alone. And if you move in with us, me and Sapphire would love and cherish you. My home would be your home. Oh. Y'all is gonna love and cherish me for fifteen dollars a week, huh? Hmm, <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, all right. And Andy, I guarantee you that Sapphire will treat you just the same as she treats me. Uh-uh. The deal's <laughs> off. Oh, Andy, she's gonna treat you good, and you'll have somebody that really care about you. Yeah. Well, maybe it's worth a try, Kingfish. Certainly, Andy. Come on, I'll go by your place with you and help you pack. And from now on, you're going to have someone to love and cherish you. <laughs> well, Andy, I guess that's about everything. You wait here, and I'll go and see Sapphire's got the room in shape. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sapphire? Yes, John. Well, I see you're cleaning out the spare room there, honey. That's right, George. And I got a surprise for you. I got a boarder out there waiting to take the room. He's gonna pay $15 a week. 
Good heavens, George. I had no idea you was going to get anybody so fast, and I've already rented the room an hour ago. You rented the room? Yes, I answered an ad in the paper. The man came up, looked at the room, and took it. He's already paid me the $15, and I gave him a long lease. And there I got Andy waiting out there to take the room. Now, what is I going to tell him? Well, George, I'm just as sorry as I can be, but there's nothing I can do. Well, I got to get back in here and get this room straightened up before the man gets here to get it. Son, I don't get you. You ain't by any chance uh, suffering with the walking amnesia, is you? <laughs> we done made a deal that you was gonna love and cherish me for $15 a week, remember? Hmm, yeah, I think I do remember discussing something like that, would you? You call this discussing? Well, Andy, I'll turn it over in my mind and I'll talk to you about it in a week or two. Uh, don't call me. I'll call you. <laughs> What is it now? All right, Kingfish, out with it. Uh, eat up on the door, Andy. You're crushing my esophagus. All oh, right. Start talking. Andy, I'm going to tell you the truth. Sapphire done rented the room to somebody else, and you is out of luck. Oh, no, I ain't, Kingfish. You is out of luck. You is going to love and cherish me like you said. I'm going to break every bone in your body. Now, step aside, Kingfish. I'm going to move into your place, and I'd like to see anything that's going to stop me. I'd like to see anything that's going to stop me. Well, I didn't see it. <laughs> Sapphire, our board is awful quiet. Is he in his room? Yes, George. He arrived while you were helping Andy move back to his apartment. You'll meet him at supper. What are you doing, unpacking? I don't know, George. He did tell me he always likes to spend an hour before supper working on his hobby. Oh, he got a hobby. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, collect stamps or something. Uh, you know, uh, philosophers. Well, uh, tell you, Sapphire, I'm glad that we got him here instead of Andy. Why, George? Well, I just got to thinking that Andy with his big feet clomping all over the place had been kind of noisy. Then he had that canary with all time singing, and you know how that stuff bothers me. Well, yes. But I did hate to see it happen to Andy. Oh, Holy mackerel, what's that and where is it coming from? George, I was just about to tell you, that's Mr. Benson. Then we ought to do something for the boy. Sound like he got a bad case of gallbladder or something. Oh, no, George, that's Mr. Benson's hobby. He's Red taking up sleep. Red sails in the sunset. Red oh, listen to that there. The Sound like he blowed a tonsil or something. Why, George, I think he sings very well. And Red Sails in the Sunset is my favorite song. Well, that's a help. He at least knows another tune. Holy mackerel, he's back in a sailboat again. What you doing sitting out here? Well, even Sapphire done took in the border, and he about to drive me out of my mind with his singing. I had to run out of the house. He gave me a migratory headache. Oh, you got a bad voice, huh? He sing nothing but red sails in the sunset. Red sails in the sunset. And I'll tell you, Amos, it's the worst hunk of sailing since my gelatin sailed around the world. <laughs> Well, I don't know why I ain't met him personal. I only know him by the sound of his clinkers. And the worst part of it, Amos, Sapphire thinks it's culture. Yeah, well, maybe he won't stay with you long, Kingfish. Well, that's what I'm banking on, Amos. I'll uh, wait until he get a load of Sapphire across the breakfast table. Mm. John? Yeah, well... Sapphire? 
Got to go now, Amos. It's so mean time. Yeah, I'll be around. the table, George. Oh, kind of fancy there. I'm going to call Mr. Benson. I want you to meet him. Mr. Benson, supper. Coming, coming. This is my... Well, well, well. You must be Stevens. Put her there, old boy. <laughs> Just to be Benson's the name, but my friends call me Breezy. <laughs> Breezy Benson. <laughs> so you say supper's ready, huh? Well, it's no more ready than I am. <laughs> We got to get more money. <laughs> yes, sir. The table sure looks good. <laughs> well, let's sit down. Uh, you sit over there. I'll sit here next to Mitten, Steve. <laughs> well, roast beef. Just what I love. And the greatest thing in the world for the vocal cords. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's get started. Ha, ha. Beef sure looks good. Oh, looks like I got a couple extra pieces caught on the park. Well, no matter. You know, I'm sure glad I found this place. It's very comfortable here, just like my own home out that place. You know, a lot of single men like hotels, but not me. No, I'm the friendly type. Like to have people around me. Uh, pass the potatoes. Yeah, I like to have a lot of people around me all the time. I hate to be alone. Just can't stand being alone. Uh, pass the string beans. <laughs> ah, thanks, Stevens, old boy. Say, you seem rather quiet. What's wrong? Well, I, uh, uh, speak up if you have something to say. Join in the conversation. A man never got any place in life keeping his mouth shut. <laughs> well, I, uh, that's right. Speak up. You know, there's a lot of conversation. You've got to learn to express yourself. That's what you got a mouth and a mind for. Use them. Well, now I agree with you on that because I always... No, 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 no. Don't overdo it. Don't be a blabbermouth. You know, you got to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, listen and learn. That's my motto. A man that keeps his mouth shut can't put his foot in it. <laughs> Boy, what a meal that was. <laughs> That the first time ever I see the talking tapeworm in my whole life. Yeah, he's, and he certainly is a conversationalist. <laughs> well, I'm glad he went to his room right after the meal. We'll at least have a little peace and quiet around here. Me, me, oh, holy mackerel. Oh, not that again. No, no. Quiet, George. I want to hear this. This is a Toreador song. Well, is that him? What are we gonna do? They go to neighbors. Stop banging on them pipes. What's going on up there? My cat just jumped out the window. Oh, Sapphire, this is awful. We gotta do something about it. Hello? What? Kill it. We can't kill it as a human being. <laughs> we are doing the best we can. Give us a chance, will you? How do you do? How do you do? I'm a friend of Mr. Benson, your new boarder. Is he in? Is he in? Can't you hear him? Oh, yes. He asked me to drop up this evening. We're old friends. Well, come right on in. Thank you. The quicker the better. <laughs> well, thank goodness for him. At least I heard him to get a rest here from that singing. George, you're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Now I know how a boy to make a feel when he knock off for lunch. Boy, what a beating. All right, George, let's not discuss it anymore. It's all over. Red tail dinner. Red tail dinner. Red tail dinner. 
$43,872. Hoping you'll give this matter your immediate attention, I remain yours very truly, Al Gonquin J. Calhoun, Esquire. <laughs> Calhoun, what's the idea of you making that recording? You know you ain't got no money in the bank. Oh, I know I ain't kingfish. But when I played this record back, it sounds so good. <laughs> in one of the most desperate situations I done ever been in. Sapphire done took in a boy in our house who thinks he's another large tidbit. And he's thinking he's driving me out of my mind. I got to get the guy out of the house. Well, uh, I don't see what your problem is. Why don't you just throw him out? I can't do that. Sapphire done signed a long-term lease with the man for a year. Take a look at it. Well, now, you know, Kingfish, I ain't no bona fide attorney. But I'll look at the thing, yeah? Yeah. 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 Kingfish, I've seen this type of lease before. And there ain't a thing in there that will allow you to throw the man out. But there's a different approach to this thing. Yeah. Make the man get out of his own accord. And Kingfish, I think I got the angle. Good. Come in. Well, is everything comfy, Mr. Benson? Fine and dandy, thanks. Uh, Mrs. Stevens went out this evening, didn't she? Oh, yeah. She has a woman's club every Thursday night. Oh, uh, pardon me. Come on in. The door's open. But what I wanted to call to your attention, Mr. Benson, was that there's nothing in your lease that say you got to occupy this room all alone. What? What are you talking about? Mr. Benson, I want you to meet your new roommate. Come right in. <laughs> and Mr. Brown, I'd like you to meet Mr. Benson. Uh, hi, Mr. Benson. Hmm, I think this is gonna be delightful for me. Well, I guess I'll put my things away. <laughs> now look here, Stevens, I'm not gonna stand for this. I'm the only one that's gonna occupy this room. Mr. Benson, I would in my rights. There's a copy of the lease. Look it over. But, Stevens, this room isn't big enough for two people, and I refuse to share it with anyone. I'm sorry, Mr. Benson, but I got no choice. Pardon me. <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is ridiculous. See where to put this. Say, I shot this thing myself over in Brooklyn. In Bro <laughs> well, you're wasting your time if you do hang it up because you're not going to be here very long. Hey, there's a place right over the bed there. There's a hook and everything on it there. <laughs> you can't hang that over my head. Gentlemen, I want you to meet your new roommate. Stevens, you wouldn't dare. This way, Mr. Matson. Gentlemen, this is Sam Matson. Welcome, Mr. Matson. Oh, fellas, how is you? Hey, it sure look nice around here, don't it? I think I'm going to like this place. Stevens, you can't put three people in this little room. I'll report you to the Board of Health. Mr. Benson, I stand within my constitutional rights as a landlord. Oh, pardon me. Hey, that's my job. Oh, okay, bud. And that's mine. Well, all right. Oh. I'll have the police in on this before the night's over. Fair sails in the sunset. Oh, bitty ba, bitty ba, bitty ba. Bitty ba, bitty, bitty ba. Now look here, you. 
Gentlemen, I want you to meet your new roommate. Oh, no, no! I knew you were taking in the right spirit, and I'm sure you all won't mind a gentleman of the theater for one of your roommates. Come right in, Mr. Calhoun. Good evening, gentlemen. Come on, Doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, take a seat. Come on, take a seat. Take a seat. That's it. Had a good. That's mine. Oh, yeah. And that's mine, brother. And that's mine. Oh, for heaven's sake, how much can a man spend? Quiet, Mr. Benson. You're disturbing other boarders here. It looks like me and you're going to have to share the third draw. Fish. Come on. to me. Say, it's a quarter to eleven, and the rule of this boarding house is that everybody got to be in bed by eleven o'clock, so get going. Lights out in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, so where's the watch room? Right across the hall there. Oh, let's get going, fellas. Here, amuse yourself while I get ready for bed. Come oh, on, boy. Now look, Stevens, lease or no lease, there's such a thing as invasion of a man's privacy. <laughs> now, when I rented this room from your wife, there was no mention about other people occupying it. <laughs> Stevens, you and I will settle this whole thing first thing in the morning. Right now, I'm going to bed. But this is my bed, and as far as those other boarders are concerned, you can worry about where they're going to sleep. Kingfish to play on the guy. But after all, if his singing was that bad, there wasn't nothing else much he could do. Yeah, well, Amos, it would have only been a matter of time before the Kingfish would have gone out of his mind. Yeah, well, tell me, when did the border leave? That seal mistook Benson's big toe for a fish. <laughs> and he was packed and out of there in 10 minutes. Yeah, well, I'm glad it's all over with anyway. I say, by the way, is Sapphire gonna rent a room to somebody else? No, the Kingfish made sure that wouldn't happen. As a matter of fact, uh, he sent a telegram for his mom-in-law to come right back. She flew back in this morning. Oh, boy, that's really something, ain't it? I never thought I'd live to see the day the Kingfish would be asking his mom-in-law to come back. Well, the Kingfish say after all, with his mom-in-law there, he can rest and relax when he comes home. Yeah. Well, I guess it just goes to show, Andy, that when it comes to having people around, I guess kin folks is best after all. Yeah, I guess you're right, Amy. <laughs> Here, Mr. Benson. Stevens, oh, I've not even talked to you. And I didn't come up here to see you. Your wife asked me up. My wife? That's right. It just so happens that my singing wasn't as offensive to her as it was to you. Well, I don't want to go into that now. All I know is I'm allergic to your kind of singing. I can't stand it. And if we never meet again, it'll be all right with me. Oh, we'll meet again, Mr. Stevens. As a matter of fact, you'll be seeing me once a week. You see, your wife was so impressed with my singing that she told your mother-in-law about it. Now I'm giving vocal lessons to the both of them. What? Holy mackerel, they done released a bull again. The Amos 
and Andy show has been presented by Platts, Milwaukee's finest beer. The Amos and Andy show is shown to our armed forces overseas on film.